Hey, a great big God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon, and today we are discussing this is not the Holy Ghost. Friends, many of you have heard my testimony. When I first met Christ over 30 years ago in a one-bedroom apartment, I didn't know where to go to church because I had never been church. My mother never took us to church. I knew nothing about any churches except one church, which was an old high school friend of mine, her church. And what I'm about to show you, let me let you watch this video and then I'll give the commentary. what I witnessed every week at this church. And even though I was a baby, I had just been born again in the spirit of God without knowing it was the voice of God because I was a baby. I, I didn't have no religion. I, I didn't come from a church. I didn't come out of any type of indoctrination whatsoever. My mother never took me and my sisters to church, no family members, none of that. But I did have a high school friend and the spirit told me to be baptized. So in looking for somewhere to be baptized, I went and I stood up to be baptized my first visit. Um, and once I kept going week after week, I started noticing this is how the people would carry on week after week after week. It was the same people over and over. And what they were giving was the impression is that this was the Holy Ghost. And I'm thinking, hmm, this, this is first of all kind of dangerous because people would just, when I say brothers and sisters, many of you have seen it, they would just break out. You didn't know who was going to jump up. If the arm was going to slap you, if the fist was going to punch you, you did not know. And it made it a very dangerous uh, uh, environment as far as I was concerned. But where my cognitive thoughts were is that I started noticing same people every week. The church was filled from each part the, the left side, the right side, even the pulpit, all through the choir. It was so many um, very effeminate men where you knew they were in that lifestyle of homosexuality, the extremely tight clothes, folk was looking high. They looked like they had just fell out the clubs. And I'm thinking, this, this ain't no Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost. Friends, and listen, you gotta understand, I'm a baby. But I start saying, no, this is not the Holy Ghost. And it was only till as I kept studying the Word of God to come to this place where I want to exhort you, friends, do not mistake this type of um, outbreak of, of celebration and dance. And listen, I'm not going to um, ever say that a person doesn't feel some kind of way, but don't ever attribute this to the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost, his primary function, his dispensation that we're in is to glorify Jesus. That's number one, to convict us of our sin and, and to bring us into righteousness, which is Christ Jesus. He's our teacher. He's our comforter, according to John chapter 14. He is our, um, he's our teacher. He is the one to reveal Christ. And friends, we know, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that the manifestations when the Spirit of God is present in our lives, we will have um, an, an unction, whether it's to bring forth um, revelatory um, gifts, word of knowledge, um, um, you got uh, faith, you got healing, word of wisdom, 
uh, miracles. These are manifestations of the spirit. When you dance, just like David, the Bible says, David, let's, let's put it out there. Let me, let me, let me let you see this. King David, look at this, look at this. That might've been how King David was getting it. Cause the Bible says King David danced so hard. He danced out of his clothes, out of his ephod and embarrassed his wife. King David would have been dancing just like that. Look, look, look. Hey. <laughs> look, the Bible says King David was doing his thing that it embarrassed Mikhail, his wife. Hear me, friends. And, and, and David said, oh, you thought I was doing something today. Wait till tomorrow. Friends, nowhere does the scriptures uh, give any indication that this was the Holy Ghost on David. It was David. It was it was his expression to God. So I'm not going to say um, this type of dance is evil or any of that, but it's not the Holy Ghost. It is a response to what you may be feeling that often in these types of churches is stirred, it's instigated by what? Music. Music can put you in a move, friends, and I'm telling you, when you have a group of people congregating and you get on them drums and you get on that keyboard and there is freedom, look, cause let look, this the pastor, watch, watch this now. She look like she might be a deaconess. Watch this though, friends, watch this, watch this now. Watch this, I'm turning this down a little bit. Now watch this. Okay, that's a young man. But look, look, the pastor, look, look. <laughs> the pastor is doing his thing. So, so if you're in a fellowship where the leadership is free, you will feel the same way to be free to express yourself. Because you got the deaconess, you got the mother of the church, everybody is doing their thing. So, so friends, we can't, we can't say this is, we can't say this is of the devil. No, no, but this is not the Holy Ghost. Y'all saw the pastor, the pastor was doing his thing. I love it, but make no mistake, my friend, this is not the Holy Ghost. This is the natural man responding to whether what you're feeling or whether it's the music, whether you're thinking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But the Holy Ghost, his primary manifestation is that of wisdom. Let us never, ever forget. He teaches us. He comforts us. And one way we are comforted is through wisdom, through knowledge, through truth. The truth makes us free. That is where the Spirit of God, he will not only bring truth to us, but help us to speak to others. This is where the gifts of, of prophecy, word of wisdom and knowledge comes to uh, bring comfort, to edify, and to exhort the hearer. So let us not get it mistaken, brothers and sisters. This is flesh. This is the, the, the body engaged to what you're feeling, whether it's instigated, whether it is prompted through music or just your thoughts of the goodness of God. But make no mistake, because if you do, you could be um, deceived, friends, because what if you don't feel like dancing? What if you are going through a season of wilderness and you are not mature in, in expressing glory and praise and honor to God, irregardless of the season you're in? But let us remember David. David danced out of that ephod. So friends, nothing wrong with it, um, but it's not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost builds us so we can build others. Amen? Because man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. God bless my friends. Till next time, and don't forget to get your free handouts as we are in that war against depression and suicide. And for many of you that may not have known, the charity that God has given me to steward 
a steward. Our mission is anti-suicide and depression. It has always been. And friends, I cannot even begin to tell you the many people I keep hearing have lost their loved ones to suicide all in these last few months. It is very disturbing. So I want to encourage you to become a winter warrior because suicide rates increase all the more, most notably the month of April. So my thought is if we keep planting these seeds, giving people truth and things that they could ponder. This also includes those that believe and make a confess confession for Jesus. Many email my ministry uh, saying that they want to give up. So friends, our uh, overcoming the battlefield of the mind handouts is just a small tool and morsel that can bring hope to the hopeless. You can visit the ministry website, the charity website. The links are in the description of the video. God bless.